Hello again. Uh, now I think it's time for you to know the different um, file extensions on OCaml so you'll become more familiar with how the compiler works and how and what every file contains and what the extension means. Now for OCaml we spoke before about uh, uh, having two compilers, OCaml C and the OCaml Opt. One, the, the, one produces bytecode, one produces uh, native code. Uh, now for the source file for the source code, OCaml source code is usually it's an ML file, so star.ml. The extension would be ML as we saw in our file.ml, the one we used before, if you remember. File.ml, that file we played about before, if you remember. Yes, or in fact, it's actually still open here as you can see. Uh, and that's for both native code and bytecode, doesn't really matter. Now for header files, we have star.mli. Why do we call them header files? In fact, sometimes these are called interfaces or signatures. And what these contain, these contain just signatures or functions or anything inside the source files rather than everything it only gives us signatures. For example, if we have a function that computes, for example, if we if in our ML file we have a function, for example, that receives an integer, and then does a bit of calculation, uh, and then uh, uh, returns a float, for example, then in the interface file, in the M MLI file, we won't have that code. We will only have the function name, the type it receives, and the type it actually. Uh, returns so only a signature I mean let me give you a quick example of what a signature looks like for example if I go to the top level if you remember we, if we, ha we can have an alias for one of the existing um, uh, modules for example module str str um, yeah I'm sorry I need to say module m equals and then it needs to be capital, by the way, and then it's it's uh, um, a sort of alias to module str. Let me do that for module string. So why is it complaining? I can't remember. Oh, oh yes, I know what's complaining. It's just me who has become forgetful. When I do a module, I don't have to say let, by the way, I just say module m equals, for example, string. And as you will see, it gives me a list of all the functions um, <coughs> inside that the, 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 the string module. Is, it tells you here, it has a signature, it begins and then ends with the word as end, as you can see. So this is a signature and this is what the interface file uh, contains. Let me exit Control D and then go back to my slides. Yes, so we said before a signature and then object files. Um, um, in fact, object files we we can actually have uh, even a .o file when I, when we compile. It usually has machine code and then the um, <coughs> the um, Uh, which is you know CMO or CMX that's the object files and then the CMA these are the library files so when we uh, compile using and by the way these these are uh, have the same idea when we compile using bytecode we get CMO when you use native code we use uh, CMX when you use OCaml opt and then here for the library files we get CMA if we do bytecode with OCaml C and we get CMX A if we do OCaml opt for the library files and um, then for the binary programs, if we compile using OCaml C, then we just get the binary name without extension. If we use native code, we get program.opt. Now let's go back to our file. Let me get rid of these so because I need to compile it rather than use it as a script or use the interpreter. Let me comment out the um, the Unix stuff so we don't need it. We will only print out. Um, something from, from the modules that we, we declared before from these modules and then if you have saved it and then if I list now file dot I only have file dot ml yes now if I want to compile I can say oh camel C 
and then if I, if I say just file.ml it compile but if I do now list, list file dot star you can see it creates a CMI file interface and CMO file that's the uh, machine code if I try to display the contents of this file then it's a binary file that's why it's a machi machine code but if I try to display the contents of the interface the CMI file then uh, I don't know why it's telling me it's a machine code but it should give me the signature uh, of, of, of the file itself now if I I can actually as we did before we can specify the output file name by saying minus O and then file and then I can do list or at least ls file uh, star maybe and I can get file that's executable and the rest of the files but by the way if I don't specify output name the output file name the executable file name then I get a dot out by default yes and it's green because it's executable so I can actually run it give me a value 16 as before and then the same thing for file as you can see and by the way file.ml is green because I gave it uh, execution permission from last video when we learned about uh, the scripting stuff now if I want to use the OCaml opt then I can use it without any problem OCaml opt if you notice it's a bit slower um, but this this produces native code so th the code must be much faster when, when we run it when we run the executable but going back to my slides that now instead of CMA it produces CMXA and instead of CMO it produces CMX and then the program would be program.opt so if I do ls file then now we have the file.o which was generated by uh, OCaml opt I think instead of uh, CMXO it gave us file.o and then uh, yeah it's overwrite it overwriting the file. Dot, uh, um, I'm sorry it overwrote a dot articles we didn't specify file name but we can do that and then do ls file again or we can do that usually the art executable looks like this which is as you can see here it's file.opt and then I can run it file of course it tell me there's multiple options file.opt and it gives value equals 16 as usual so this is the these are the um, um, ex file extensions that I wanted to you to be familiar with thank you very much indeed for watching I think I will stop this tutorial here and start another series in the near future thank you again for watching indeed please visit my webpage it's in the comments area of uh, the very first video of this series underneath the video you will find a link to my personal web page and you will find a few links for some useful material for you to learn or come thanks again and I'll see you in my next series